Hello, this is Mike Foreman with Game Plan Retirement. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Let's Ask Mike. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the economy. So I'm going to share my screen here. And uh, what I'd like to do is talk about um, the economy. So I'm going to build on some things we've talked about before. This is a slide that talks about how bond prices are uh, affected by uh, interest rates. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it was the subject of another episode of Let's Ask Mike. Suffice to say that uh, bond prices tend to work inversely with uh, interest rates. So when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. When interest rates go down, bond prices go up. Nothing surprising about that. That's you know basically a, a, almost a rule of nature. What I do want to talk about today is the business cycle. Uh, a lot of times, uh, especially uh, as of late, uh, we have a lot of talk about whether or not we're in a recession or in an uh, expansion, or uh, every now and then you hear the term depression. And there's, there's some vague definitions of these sorts of things, um, but actually there's a group that makes a determination. Uh, they're called the National Bureau of Economic Research, and uh, they're the ones that determine whether or not we are in these various uh, positions. Um, and there are various investment firms that will uh, sort of forecast where different countries are in, these, uh, in this cycle. Uh, basically, the business cycle uh, is, is based on gross domestic product. So when that is increasing, a country is in expansion. Uh, that typically reaches a peak, or it always has. And then there's a contraction. If that contraction is short term, um, you know, uh, then we don't give it any name at all. If it uh, is longer than two quarters, um, and the uh, group that I mentioned, the National Bureau of Economic Research agrees, then we would call that a recession. If it lasts longer than a year, typically that would be called a depression. And then typically we would shift into an expansion, go through a peak, go through another contraction. And this cycle continues on and on and on. And uh, based on our current economic system, and probably even ones before us, it's just sort of a natural sort of uh, way of, you know, just the world working. Um, and, and so there's investment firms that periodically will publish data based on their own research that shows where different countries are in this uh, cycle, uh, such as, uh, you know, this is from a, a, a recent one, uh, which shows that most countries are kind of headed towards recession, which isn't necessarily a bad investment environment. In fact, if you, if you look back over time, you see almost all recessions ended up being a good opportunity to buy uh, investments because they were you know, actually you know, cheaper at that time. Um, and so in addition to that, uh, some of the tools that are used to kind of forecast and guess whether a recession is coming or not uh, are one, the yield curve, uh, this is a normal yield curve, another thing we've talked about before, and it just shows that as the maturity on a bond is longer, typically you're going to see a higher interest rate than you will for extremely short-term bonds. And sometimes you'll hear about an inverted yield curve. And sometimes it is considered to be a indicator that a recession is coming, uh, and, and how it, but it can also happen on a short-term basis. And again, it's not officially in a, a recession or, or, or anything else uh, other than an expansion, which is everything other than either a recession or a depression. Um, and um, sometimes, so when the Federal Reserve announces new interest rates, as they try to keep inflation and employment in check, um, they will change the short-term rate that banks charge each other overnight, super short-term, one day. Um, and then the rest of the curve is set by the market. And so sometimes what you'll have is the Federal Reserve will increase interest rates in that overnight market. It'll take a little while for the rest of the market to you know, create that normal yield curve. And so you'll have a flash of this inverted yield curve. Uh, and again, even if it does stay inverted for two quarters, there still is a group uh, at this National Bureau of Economic uh, Research who officially determines whether or not we are in a recession or, a, or an expansion or a depression. And they have records on their website that go all the way back 
to uh, the beginning of the uh, you know economy back to the 18 well back to the 1850s and uh, taught, they show how this cycle has gone through its various uh, you know changes over time. So I hope that uh, clears things up a little bit. If you'd like to talk about it more in detail and how that might affect what you should do with your portfolio, we generally uh, work with folks that have a long-term time frame and, and aren't trying to time the market with, with any of this kind of information. But um, I hear these terms uh, bantered about quite a bit lately, and I, I just thought I'd add a little bit that I think maybe simplifies things. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you're doing well and you, you and your family are doing well. And if I can be helpful in any way or we, the rest of us can, just let us know. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.